High Mars. Javelins. Howitzers. These weapons can all be found on the battlefield in Ukraine. They're made by American arms companies, and the United States has been providing them to Kyiv since the Russia-Ukraine conflict began in February. Since then, the Biden administration has invested a total of over 8 billion US dollars in security assistance to Ukraine, including weapons. And we are doing everything we can as the United States, working around the clock to deliver our own weapons, organizing and coordinating the delivery of weapons from many other countries. In mid-April, just three days after Sullivan's remarks, the Pentagon hosted leaders from the top eight U.S. weapons manufacturers. They discussed the industry's capacity to meet Ukraine's weapons needs if the conflict continues for years. And in early May, President Joe Biden visited the Lockheed Martin plant, which is helping produce and supply weapons to Ukraine. Lockheed Martin is one of the world's five largest arms companies. The other top four, Raytheon, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, and General Dynamics are also all based in the U.S. In 2021, the U.S. was home to half of the world's top 100 producers of arms. The Stockholm International Peace Research Institute says the U.S. was the number one weapons exporter by a large margin. From 2017 to 2021, it accounted for 39% of major arms deliveries worldwide. And since the conflict in Ukraine began, these arms producers have been making more money. The stock price of Lockheed Martin rose to $453 per share on March 25th, up from 354 in early January, an increase of 28%. And Raytheon's stock price rose nearly 20% during the same period. The share prices of Northrop Grumman and General Dynamics also increased beginning in late February. Even before the Russia-Ukraine conflict started, CEO of Raytheon Gregory Hayes in January said the company could stand to benefit from tensions in Eastern Europe. From howitzers to tactical vehicles, the Russia-Ukraine conflict is big business for arms makers. President Biden pledged an additional $800 million in weapons. It includes the American-made anti-tank weapon. Washington has sent over 6,500 Javelin anti-tank missile systems to Ukraine, which are made by Raytheon and Lockheed Martin. The cost of each missile is about $78,000, and the launcher is another $100,000. Meanwhile, Raytheon has sent around 1,400 Stinger anti-aircraft missiles to Ukraine already. And the company has been granted a $625 million contract to produce 1,300 more to replenish its stock. The U.S. has also pledged 700 switchblade tactical missile systems made by AeroVironment to Kyiv. Raytheon knows that they can make a profit out of what it calls defending democracy. Uh, I make no apology for that. Uh, I think, again, um, recognizing you know, we are there to defend democracy. Uh, everything that's being shipped into Ukraine today, of course, is coming out of stockpiles, either at DOD or uh, from our NATO allies. And uh, that's all great news. Eventually, we'll have to replenish it. And we'll, we will see a, a benefit to the business over the next coming years. While some of the weapons being sent to Ukraine are from some country's existing stockpile, experts say fresher, newly built supplies are also being delivered. As the conflict continues, the United States is granting more aid. In May, Congress approved $40 billion in aid for Ukraine and other countries affected by the conflict. The package includes $19 billion of near-term military aid accounting for 47% of the total, with $9 billion of that to be used for replenishment of U.S. weapon stocks. The rest of the aid will be used to support U.S. forces in Europe, as well as for global humanitarian relief, international programs, and support to NATO allies. Uncertainty remains over how long the conflict will last, but arms makers are still preparing. The head of Northrop Grumman, Kathy Warden, has called on Western governments to clearly outline weapons needs for Ukraine. 
She warned that weapon stockpiles had not been built to service a lengthy conflict. Besides sending weapons to Ukraine, the U.S. State Department in July said it would back the sale of $1.45 billion worth of weapons to NATO allies Estonia and Norway. On July 21st, it also cleared a possible sale of 96 Patriot missiles to the Netherlands. The contract of the Raytheon-made surface-to-air missiles is estimated to be worth $1.2 billion. The two sales have not yet been finalized or approved. As the conflict goes on, military aid from the U.S. and its allies continues to pour into Ukraine. While a prolonged conflict means more suffering for the people in the region, for arms manufacturers and dealers, it means more and bigger business.